So hi guys, it's uh, Bob again from Greybeard Models and uh, before we go any further I'd just like to give a big shout out to um, all of my new subscribers and, uh, and my old ones um, just noticed on YouTube that I've now got 300 subscribers that's absolutely amazing can't believe it it's incredible so thank you so much for everybody who has liked and subscribed um, it's, it's, it's really brilliant um, and I really appreciate all your comments and uh, the, the help that you guys have given me I've had some great advice over over the course of running this this channel so um, thank you so much and uh, we'll get on to the next uh, next video and uh, look at the corrugated so one of the things that I wanted to look at was uh, this sort of corrugated material that I had in my last video and uh, how we make it and uh, I think you'll agree that you know that looks far more realistic than some of the proprietary products that are out there and uh, it's actually really cheap to make um, just need um, to acquire the material this is sort of an aluminium foil that comes in a pie dish um, but I'll show you uh, I'll show you how that how that's done so let's get onto the green mat and we'll make a start so a few years ago I was uh, going through my local craft shop and I found this little device and it's actually got two wheels inside it or two rollers inside it I don't know if you can see them there you feed your material in and you corrugate it and it's designed for making I suppose corrugated card or whatever for people that are doing I don't know birthday cards scrapbooks that sort of paper craft type of stuff but um, actually works just as well with this material so where do I get this material right let's move that out of the way and present you with let's just move the camera up a little bit um, this is a pie dish for the life of me I can't remember what was in it but this is the sort of thing you get with a, a ready-made pie or maybe a meal that you heat up in the oven something like that you buy it in the supermarket <coughs> the meals are reasonable but you end up with this material and there's a couple of things you need to deal with one is it's certainly here in the UK it's, it's embossed with this symbol which indicates it's aluminium or aluminum um, and this is a cheap way of getting free aluminum sheet or aluminum sheets so what do we do well the first thing we do is we cut the sides off like this sides like this, flatten it all down only because it's easy to cut then and then it's fairly if, easy to cut with these uh, scissors I think these are titanium scissors um, material nothing scrap in model making that's 
tend to keep some of this aside um, if you want to make brackets and things and you don't want to use photo etch this is a good material for replicating sheets and whatever in, in metal but you can you can keep that when I reshot uh, this piece of footage uh, when I when I played back the other footage that I'd, <laughs> I'd just recorded um, it, I was out of shot for most of the most of the detail so I thought I'd just redo this um, this is a, a stainless steel model makers scale rule this is in 135th scale uh, by a company called Expo um, I don't know if they're available worldwide or whatever but they've got some interesting conversion tables on the back it converts sort of fractions into decimals and stuff but uh, it's 135th scale and here you've got on this part of it you've got feet and, feet and uh, sort of six inches in that sort of thing into smaller dimensions so what I thought I'd do is just show you again so the best thing to do is just mark out another piece for you to see so we'll go for eight feet there and about eight feet there and uh, just mark the whole thing and uh, run the scalpel along it we won't scrap that because we have to use that so that's eight feet long or eight feet eight feet wide and then the other dimension was four feet four feet there and four feet there and then what we do is we just run the scalpel along it again And there you have another piece that's uh, eight foot by four foot. Four foot. Passes with the knife. And there we have a sheet. So we carry on through the whole sheet, basically. Um, cutting exercise and before we go any further one of the other things that I do is this has got a fairly sort of smooth aluminum surface so what I do is I get one of these infinity sticks I've got a 400 grit one here so it's fairly coarse although having said that I've had quite a bit of use out of this one so it's not as coarse as a brand new one but it'll do um, and just key up the, the, the surface of the material and what I tend to do is just drag the sanding stick along the material and you may have other materials that, or, or other sanders that you might use but by doing this what you're doing is just keying the surface do it like that chances are you might snag it and push it back so I tend to just run it in one direction to smooth the material out like that so let's keep the surface and do the other side turn it around and do it that way I suppose but 
by keying the surface like that, um, you've actually got a nice, a nice surface there for um, the paint to stick to. And then you get a kitchen towel, a little wipe over, and that will lift off some of the uh, aluminium dust that's on there. Like that, and one of the other things that I, can, I do is uh, just got to make sure make sure the surface is clean. Just give it a wipe over. some alcohol any other proprietary cleaner will do like it's picked up a Boston little notch there from the surface but never mind so we've got bits of, bits of dirt on the cutting mat um, there you go just clean that up Give that a, I'll give it another run, run under the, under the rolling pin. Yeah, and that'll take out all the lumps and bumps from the embossing. So having done that, we get a gizmo, load the sheet into the into the machine, and there you have it. One sheet. corrugated material I think you agree you can, put, you can pull that out and just sort of even, even up the corrugation so they're not too too severe I think you'll agree that looks far better as a corrugated edge than uh, pretty much anything out there on the market so now to the next step an 8x4 sheet of corrugated material so you can put that onto your model do an overlap like they do you can just pull it out slightly if you want to lower the indentations or get the indentations sort of even and overlap it like that and now you've got a corrugated roof or corrugated panels whatever you want if you want if you're building a, a maybe a dugout in a world war one trench or something like that or in indeed in a second world war trench um there you have a stock for the size of panel and obviously you can rough cut this and and paint it um, use a use a good primer, paint it, and rust. You know, do rust effects and all the rest of it. But it's a really good um, material to use this pie pie dish material because it it has a certain sort of rigidity to it. But I hope you find that useful. I hope you find that interesting. Not just for for this diorama, but but for any diorama you happen to be working on. Like I say, find your local craft shop that sort of thing um, and see if you can find a, a corrugator um, I don't know how much this was I can't, can't, well for, I can't remember how much this was I don't think it was very expensive I think it was about six or seven quid uh, six or seven pounds in the UK here but I did buy it um, probably about eight years ago but uh, I hope you find that useful and uh, I'll get back to you soon 
Bye for now.